What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today, let's talk about angular motion. In this case, we're going to express our angular motion, or the angular motion of a particle in Cartesian coordinates. And how we express this in angular coordinates. Okay? So let's consider a particle. Let's say if this is your two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system X and Y. So let's say this is the section of that circular path or angular path. So from here, we define two points. Let's say the particle moves from this point. Let's call this point 1 to this point. Let's call this point 2. Now here we define the two position functions or position uh, position vectors R1 and R2. Okay. So R1 is defined by this uh, angular position theta1. And then R2 is defined by this angular position, theta2. So from here, we can define the angular displacement, delta theta. Now here, by convention, we're going to set counterclockwise direction to be positive. Okay, so the direction of theta1 will be in this direction, if you can see that. And theta2 will be in this direction. Now from here, you can define the displacement vector like this one. So this will be delta r. Okay. Also, we can define the arc length that the particle took from point 1 to point 2. And that's this arc. Let's call that arc S. Okay? Or, we can actually say that that is, since this is a change in uh, position, let's call this delta S. Just to indicate that what we're talking about is a change in position in the angular direction. Okay, now here we define the following. Again, as I mentioned earlier, let's define the arc length. That's delta S. And we know that this is equal to R delta theta. Where theta, theta 1, theta 2, and delta theta are measured in radians. So from here, we can take the average speed. So that's the total distance traveled per unit time. So if this motion took is taken in delta t uh, period of delta t so therefore the average velocity or average speed sorry is the this total distance traveled from 1 to 2 so this is delta s divided by delta t in terms of the angular displacement delta theta this is equal to r delta theta with respect to time so here we call this parameter the angular speed Okay, now the instantaneous speed or simply speed will now be equal to B. And this is equal to the limit of the average speed. Which is equal to the derivative of S with respect to time. 
are simply s dot. In terms of the angular speed, this is equal to um, the limit from delta, uh, as delta t approaches 0 of r delta theta with respect to time or divided by delta t. Taking this limit, this becomes r d theta dt. So this is now your instantaneous angular speed. Just to differentiate this with this uh, with this com uh, quantity, let's call this the average angular speed. So this will now be your instantaneous angular speed. Okay. In dot notation, this is actually equal to r theta dot. Now, how about acceleration? Okay. Acceleration is now equal to the derivative of the speed with respect to time. And this is also the second derivative with respect to s or s double dot. You can actually write this also as r times second derivative of theta with respect to time or r theta double dot. So here we call the theta double dot to be the angular acceleration. Okay. Uh, it, uh, in your general physics class, we usually write the instantaneous angular speed as omega and the angular acceleration as alpha. So that's why if you're going to look at this and this, you can actually write the velocity or the speed to be r omega that's the usual form that you already know and acceleration to be r alpha okay so that looks familiar to you already that's it does uh, angular motion in Cartesian coordinate system in relation to angular coordinates. And we're going to use this as needed in the coming days. For now, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!